Hey guys, it's Jill. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to our new today's video is going to be a dump and go crock pot video that I hope that you guys enjoy. I know a lot of you guys have missed these videos, so I am bringing them back. I'm not sure how many crock pot videos or crock pot meals are going to be in this video, but let me know in the comments down below what is your preferred amount of meals to see in a specific video and also how long do you prefer these videos to be so is it more of a i don't like videos to be more than 20 25 minutes i don't care how many you add or don't give me more than four or five in a video let me know in the comments down below i'm going to try to figure out how many are in here it's already in the title but it is going to be between four and six and i hope that you guys enjoy we here in this kitchen we make mistakes <laughs> i just want to also put that out there we are always learning in this kitchen so there are some things where i made a little boo-boo but i also tell you how to not make the same mistake i did so maybe it's a good thing that i make mistakes in this kitchen so i'm teaching you what not to do and what to do all right i hope that you guys enjoy this video if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're new here and you're not subscribed and make sure you leave me a comment down below so let's get into it first up is beef vegetable soup and this is something that I absolutely love. And there's so many different things that you can add and so many different veggies. So let's get into making this deliciousness. So first we need to go ahead and brown up our ground beef. I am doing this the night before just to kind of make it easier on myself. You can do it. However, as a matter of fact, when I've been like really, really, really short on time, I have even thrown in ground beef not even cooked into the crock pot and it's been just fine now the texture is a little off to me but so it's definitely better for you to brown your ground meat but it's not an absolute necessity unless you're like really big on texture and just can't stand the texture of ground beef that has not been browned up but I'm just gonna go ahead and work on browning this up and then I'm just gonna let it cool off and then I'm gonna put it into a container. So tomorrow when I go to make my crock pot dinner, it just all goes straight in and I don't have to worry about this step at all. Another tip you guys, cause I have done this before in the past when I had more freezer space and I had a deep freezer and then I had another freezer and then I had another freezer. Um, what I used to do was I would go ahead and buy like big, big packs and like multiple packs of ground beef. I would just brown the whole thing and then I would weigh out like one pound increments or do like about one pound increments and I would put them in the freezer. So anytime I needed, anytime I needed ground beef or anything really quick, um, I was just able to pull it out of the freezer, whether it was for a crock pot meal or whether it was for something really quick for dinner. So that's a really good tip for you guys. Just brown it all up, let it cool down, put it in some freezer bags, throw that junk in the freezer, and you got, ooh, you've got browned up ground beef for your dinners. That is all cooked up, browned up, ready to go. I'm just gonna put this in a container, put the lid on it, and then it'll be ready for our first crock pot dinner for tomorrow but I did want to show you that I was doing this so that way it's going to make it really easy for me tomorrow morning to just throw everything in the crock pot. So next we're going to need one onion and then a one cup of diced celery and what I'm doing is y'all saw that I just ground y'all saw that I just browned up my ground beef well this same night I was like you know what I'm going to go ahead and cut up my veggies that I need to cut up too. So this chopper is linked down below in my Amazon favorites store, in my Amazon storefront, which is linked down below in my description box. So if you guys want one, I highly recommend. But I just went ahead and I chopped up my onion and then I went ahead and chopped up my celery as well because that way it's already done, it's either way. So then in the morning, all I have to do is literally just dump all these things in. So for this beef soup, beef vegetable soup, we need one pound of ground beef browned up, one cup of celery diced up and then one whole onion and again this little machine whatever you want to call it chopper <laughs> it makes it so 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 simple 
And this tip I do all the time because I just don't have a whole lot of time in the morning. So it's just like throw everything in. So get as much stuff as you can done the night before. That is my recommendation to save time in the morning because my mornings are hectic even though I work from home. Also get yourself a vegetable chopper because that's going to save you so much time as well. So this is what your onion and celery should look like. You guys already saw that I went ahead and I sh took a shortcut and I ground, I browned up this ground beef. So this is one pound of lean ground beef going in to the crock pot. So you're gonna need one onion diced and then one cup of celery. You guys already saw me do that. So you just put that down in there as well. And I will link this dicer down below. I absolutely love it. I also link this crock pot down below because it's amazing and it's beautiful. Now we're gonna take one jar of pasta sauce. So whatever is your favorite, do like that. And then one can of Rotel or diced tomatoes with green chilies. This is just the Walmart brand. You're going to take, you need three and a half cups of water but I always do this with my pasta sauce jars. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the water that's gonna go down into the crock pot into my jar so I get all of that pasta sauce out. I need one teaspoon of beef bouillon. So I'm gonna show you what I got. It's this Goya, Goya? sorry if I'm mispronouncing that but it's that brand. And then the recipe calls for just a 16 ounce pack of frozen mixed vegetables, but I personally like this Pick, Pick Sweet Farms vegetables for soup. And in here you have, let's see, potatoes, carrots, tomatoes, corn, green beans, onions, peas, and celery. So I actually probably didn't need the celery, but it's fine. This is also a lot more vegetables than what the recipe called for, so I might actually need a little bit more water, but I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. And then I also like okra in my soups, but I'm not gonna put this into the end, like towards the end of when it's almost done, because of the fact that it kinda, I feel like it kinda gets a little slimy, but I do add okra. So the beauty of things like this is you can just add what you want add what you, or take away what you don't like. So if you just like the regular mixed vegetables or the frozen mixed vegetables, then just put that in there. I'm just gonna stir it, mix it together. And this is going to go on low for six to eight hours. I say this all the time, like the longer that soups, stews, and chilies cook, the better they taste. Low for well, I guess we'll do six. We'll do seven hours. And there we go. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. This has been cooking for seven hours now. I'm going to go ahead and add in some okra. This looks so delicious. Look at it, you guys. Oh my gosh. Yum. I'm going to go ahead, like I said, and add some okra. Okay, so here is my first mistake. I cooked this for 30 minutes and they came out so crunchy. They were not that great. So definitely cook it, if not the whole time, at least for several hours so it's not crunchy. Okay, so this has been cooking for a while. Ta-da! There's several things that you can do as a side with this, okay? Crusty Italian bread. Oh my gosh, that'd be so good. Some garlic bread. You could do grilled cheese. You could do cornbread. You could do Parmesan cheese on top. You could do cornbread muffins. You could do crackers. You could do tortilla chips. Lots of delicious yumminess that you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my crock pot off. But look at all of these delicious veggies. Oh, so good. So I'm just gonna ladle a couple of scoops and then get some of that juice, just like that. So for me, the side that I'm going to have is going to be a piece of sourdough bread with some butter 
and just look at how delicious this looks. I'm trying to get like everything in here. Got some corn, green bean, okra, potato, beef, the broth. Mm. That is so good. It was perfect for this fall cooler weather. Nice and cozy and delicious. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys make this. Are you guys a fan of a vegetable beef soup? I'm a huge fan. Of course, obviously, if you want to just make a vegetable soup too, you could always use this base and then just leave out the beef and then make it with veggie broth. Mm. But this is absolutely delicious. I'm also going to top it with some Parmesan cheese. Mm. This is simply called a slow cooker chicken thighs, but don't let the simple name fool you. This was absolutely insanely delicious. So basically, this is a slow cooker chicken thighs that's going to be served with hearty vegetables. It is tender pieces of chicken, potatoes, carrots, and corn, and it's in a lemon garlic herb sauce. It is absolutely delicious, and if you make nothing out of this video, but one thing, let it be this. It was so good. Now let me show you how to make it. Today we are making slow cooker chicken thighs and what you're gonna need is about four bone-in chicken thighs, which I'm gonna show you guys. One teaspoon of salt, pepper, you need some olive oil, which is over there. You're gonna need some red onion, which as you can see, I already have that diced up. You're gonna need one and a half cups of carrots, which again, you see I have that diced up one pound of baby red potatoes cut in half or quartered. You're gonna need some corn. I have it frozen, so it's still in the freezer. I'm not gonna put that in yet. You're gonna need garlic, unsalted chicken stock, one and a quarter cup of that. You're gonna need all-purpose flour, some lemon juice, which I have right there. Uh, four sprigs of thyme, which I have right here. I thought I bought rosemary, but apparently I didn't. So I'm just gonna use a dried rosemary for this. Now this crock pot meal is going to be a little bit more of a labor of love, but I still consider it a dump and go because this is still so much easier and so much quicker than creating a, a meal or like cooking it on the stove top or whatever, even though we are gonna do a little bit of stove top work here. So as you can see, I cut everything up. Just buy yourself a little dicer if you want to save on time because that is such a huge time saver. I will link it down below. And we're gonna go ahead and get started over here at the stove with our chicken. So here is our chicken. It is skin on, bone in chicken thighs. We're going to need, I think a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons. Yeah, two tablespoons of olive oil into the pan. Like I said, it's already hot. So skin side down is where this chicken is going or how it's going in the pot. I hope it's not still frozen out. It's still a little frozen. Girl, you could not hear me over all this sizzling going on in this pan. So basically what you're going to do is place the skillet over medium high heat. Once it's hot, you're gonna add the olive oil. Then you wanna add the chicken skin side down. You're gonna sear that until golden brown for about five minutes. Then you're gonna flip it and continue cooking for about two minutes. And then you're gonna transfer it over to a clean plate. In the bottom, we're gonna put the potatoes. Then in goes our carrots and onions. And now we need to wait on the chicken because the chicken comes on this next. So while we are waiting on the chicken to finish up, we're gonna go ahead and make the sauce. So you need one and a quarter cups of unsalted or reduced sodium chicken broth. You're gonna add in half a teaspoon of pepper. One teaspoon of salt. I totally forgot to season my chicken, by the way, so I'm gonna go do that right now, because I totally forgot. <laughs> Three tablespoons of flour. One tablespoon of lemon juice. And you wanna whisk that together. I just am whisking it, save on dishes, in the measuring cup in which I use to measure out my chicken broth. But you do you, boo. So I have no idea where the footage is of me putting this corn it's miraculously on top of the vegetables but go ahead and take either a frozen bag of corn on the cob 
or take fresh corn on the cob, cut it because you're going to want between the recipe calls for one ear cut into four pieces. But as you see, I have more than four pieces and girl, I would leave it exactly how I have it. But you do you. It's your kitchen, girl. Just do do what do what's best for your kitchen. Into the crock pot, we are going to add our seared chicken. Over top of our veggies. Just like so. Now on top of the chicken, you want to put four sprigs of thyme. So, just like so. And if you have fresh rosemary, put two sprigs of rosemary, but I'm just going to measure with my heart with dried rosemary. This is going to be delicious. I just know it. Now you want to pour your little flour, chicken broth, lemon mixture over top. Now we're just going to go ahead and pop the lid on this. And you can cook this on high for two to four hours, or you can cook this on low for six to eight. I'm going to go ahead and cook it on low for six hours. So, hello. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I'm very, very, very excited about this one. All right, my bad, y'all. I forgot to add the garlic. My head's not here today. That's okay, though. We're not perfect, are we? Sometimes people expect YouTubers to be perfect. But let me tell you, girl, I am just as human as you are. Just as human. Just because I'm trying to come on here and show you some good food recipes does not mean that I'm not human too. Okay, now we're gonna put the lid on and now we're gonna let that cook for six hours. Okay, so it has been about seven, eight hours and this is what we're looking like. It smells incredible. Okay, so I do want this skin to be crispy. So what I'm going to personally do is put them in my little, what's this thing called? Air fryer kind of, oven thing I don't know so I'm just gonna take the chicken out of this slow cooker put it on this little pan make sure that the skin side is up I'm also gonna take that time out of here too so I'm just gonna take this put this here and we're gonna press broil we're gonna do it for seven minutes, five minutes, and we'll see how it goes. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plate up plates, but this is what this looks like. Okay, so here's how it turned out. Yum, yum, yum. So what I'm actually gonna do with my potatoes is treat them like a baked potato, and I'm gonna put on some garlic herb butter, a little bit of bacon, cheese and light sour cream and we will taste test this together in a minute okay so here's what my potatoes look like the sour cream didn't smell good so we ain't eating that but let's go ahead and try this together because this smells phenomenal okay i'm gonna have some of the chicken skin mm, that is good i would definitely recommend broiling it especially if you want to eat the skin Mm. The chicken tastes delicious, and I'm going to take my potato mixture. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. That's incredible. It tastes really good with the carrots, too. And then I'm going to try my corn. This is so incredibly delicious. I highly recommend. I will link the recipe down below. I'm definitely keeping this in the stash of recipes to make again. I do wanna say I taste no lemon in this, 
or that sauce that we made. So I'm gonna go ahead and take half of this lemon and I'm just gonna pour it over my chicken. Cause I do want my chicken to be a little lemony. Cause I feel like that was the whole point. So let me try it now. Mm. Highly recommend this. Ava's over here excited to eat this too. But I'll see you guys for our next Dumb and Go crock pot dinner. It's so good. Next up, we have crock pot Olive Garden chicken Alfredo pasta. This was such a huge hit with me and my kids, but especially my kids. My kids love this, and out of all of these, this was definitely their favorite. So for this crock pot dinner, we are making crock pot Olive Garden chicken Alfredo pasta. I am halving this recipe, okay? But the recipe is going to be down below. This is everything that we're going to need right now. And then this is what we're going to need once everything's done and cooked. So let's go ahead and get into throwing this into the crock pot. So the recipe calls for four boneless, skinless chicken breasts to be diced. I only had two, mainly because I'm not sure if my kids are gonna like this and if they don't, then I don't want six servings of it. But two, that's all the chicken I had. So <laughs> down in the crock pot, that goes. Next, the recipe called for 16 ounces of the Olive Garden Light Italian. I probably have about half, I'm trying to see where it's at. It's about right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the rest of this and pour it down over the chicken. Ooh, I'm not even gonna use all of it. I'm just gonna do it like that. So maybe I used about six ounces. Give that a little shake. The recipe called for one tablespoon of garlic. I'm still gonna go with one tablespoon of garlic because your girl loves garlic here. We're gonna do some pepper. The recipe calls for half a teaspoon. I'm just gonna measure with my heart. I don't measure. I don't really measure spices anymore. Let me know in the comments down below. Sometimes I do, but a lot of times I'm just like, I just throw it in there. And then, this is super freaking simple because we're almost done. You wanna take, if you're gonna half this, do a quarter of a cup. However, my family loves Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna do the full half cup that the recipe calls for. I hope that this is making sense. I'm doubling, I'm sticking with the recipe on some things and then on other things, I'm halving it. Okay, so half a cup, if this goes over, again, no biggie, cause we love it. So I just, as you can see, used shredded Parmesan, whatever I had left, and then the rest is going to be this powdered. So you can cook this on low for six to eight hours or cook it on high for three hours. I'm gonna do low for six. And I'm actually gonna keep an eye on it because I don't think it's gonna take that long. I think it's actually gonna only take four hours because I remember I half this and I don't have as much chicken. I'm also gonna keep my eye on the liquid part of this and make sure that it doesn't dry out. So yeah, I will let y'all know what this looks like. By the way, 30 minutes before you're ready to eat is when you wanna add your pasta, but you're also gonna add in some cream cheese. So I will see you 30 minutes before we're ready to eat. So this cooked for the full six hours, and now I'm just taking four ounces of cream cheese, and I'm just putting that down into the mixture. And then once that gets down, I'm gonna kinda stir it up a little bit and kinda like squish, squish down the cream cheese as much as I possibly can just to kind of help it melt a little bit. And then you're gonna let it cook on low for 30 minutes. While this is going, make sure you cook the pasta and make sure you cook the pasta separately. I don't think that you could make the pasta in here because I don't think that there's enough liquid. So go ahead and get your pasta going as well. It has been 30 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and stir that in a second. But we need to go ahead and cook our, cook our pasta. So like I said, remember I'm halving this recipe. The original recipe calls for eight ounces, no, 16 ounces, which is this full box. I have eight ounces. I actually weighed it and it's like eight point something ounces. So it's like right on with halving this. Now we're gonna come over here. 
while that is boiling and I'm going to mix this together. This smells freaking amazing. I thought I was not gonna really like this. The kids came in, they were like, oh my gosh, what is that smell? Uh, Kentrell had a friend over today. She was like, what is that smell? So this, this smells amazing. And I'm thinking that it's gonna be really, really, really tasty. So I just need to wait until the noodles boil, the pasta boils, and then we will be able to put all of this together. Okay, so my pasta is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down into my chicken. Down into the pot with the chicken and the sauce. And we're just gonna mix all of that together. Oh, oh, oh girl! We're turning this off because I do not want this pasta to keep cooking. I made that mistake and that was not good. It was complete mush. Oh, this smells amazing. Y'all come down and get a good look in inside. Just look at how good that looks. It looks amazing. Okay, it might not look good, but let me tell you, it smells delicious and I'm about to plate this up and we're gonna taste it together. Here is my plate. I have a side salad with lots of veggies and my homemade ranch dressing. If you guys wanna learn more about my homemade ranch dressing, go watch my salads video. I have like five or six salads that I did and they're all absolutely delicious. So I'll link that video down below. But I'm so excited to try out this delicious pasta. What is this called? Crock Pot Olive Garden Chicken Alfredo Pasta. I am the only one here tonight. Having teens and being a single mom kind of sucks. I'm not gonna lie. I don't like eating alone. <laughs> but it is what it is. They're having fun and I would not have it any other way other than I would, I would prefer for a man to be here. Like, good man, you know, like a man. Anyways. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try the chicken. Mm. Girl, you better make this. You better make this. It's so good. It is so good. My kids are gonna love this. I know they're gonna love this. And it makes your home smell absolutely delicious. So this one was a big success. Next up is Crock-Pot Jalapeno Popper Chicken Soup. You guys, this is amazing. Look how creamy and thick and delicious. But we're not just making that. We are also making jalapeno popper corn muffins. So let me show you how to make it. Today we are making crock pot jalapeno popper chicken soup, which I am so excited for. So this is everything that we're gonna need right now. I went ahead and I prepped, did a little bit of prepping last night, which always helps me out. And that's a tip for you guys. If you have busy mornings, go ahead and do what you can the night before. And then this is what we're going to need once everything is all nice and cooked. So, well, you're gonna need to put that in 30 minutes before it's fully cooked. So or before you're ready to eat it. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and put everything into this crock pot. So first the recipe calls for four chicken breasts. I only have three. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal, but down to the crock pot or down into the crock pot on the bottom is where that is going. To that, I'm just going to season it with two tablespoons of taco seasoning. If I can even get two tablespoons out of this container, there's one tablespoon. There's two tablespoons. It also calls, calls for one teaspoon of pepper and one teaspoon of salt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put pepper and salt or season them with pepper and salt. Salt and pepper. Like so. Now in my chopper, which I will link down below, I have half of an onion chopped or diced and I have two jalapenos that I have seeded and diced in here. So that is going down over top the chicken. And then I have two cans of Northern beans. It does not say to rinse these. So 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the juice down in there. Usually I would rinse, but eh, I think it's gonna be fine. Cause this is a soup. So the more soup, the more juice you can get, I guess the better it'll be. And then we need one can of cream of chicken soup, which I got the, whoa, <laughs> the lighter, uh, lower sodium, lower calorie, lower fat option. And then last night I also made some chicken broth with some chicken bouillon granules. So I did, I think it was like one teaspoon to one cup, but all you're gonna need is one cup of broth. And I think we need some garlic because I have garlic out. We do not need garlic. So I'm actually going to leave them out. That's everything. So if you want to go ahead and just mix it up. Do a little mixy mix. And then like I said, this is going to go in 30 minutes before it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and cook this on low for six hours. So you cook it on low for six to eight hours or high for two to four hours. Okay, so hear me out. To my jalapeno popper crock pot chicken soup, I wanted to make corn muffins. I thought it would be a good combo. Then I got to thinking, I've got this extra jalapeno Let's go ahead and make some jalapeno popper corn muffins. Sometimes, sometimes I'm a genius, y'all. Are they gonna be good? I don't know. I've never tried, I've never tried it, but we're gonna try together. So into a bowl, I'm going to add one packet of Jiffy Mix corn muffin mix. And I'm gonna follow the instructions on the side of the box, which is one egg and then a third of a cup of milk, which I'm going to use unsweetened almond milk for this. I have my oven currently preheating to 400 degrees. These are going to cook for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so to this, I'm gonna bring y'all down. To this mixture, I'm gonna add one diced up seeded jalapeno. I'm then gonna add this Velveeta Shreds. I'm gonna do about a quarter of a cup. I'm really gonna eyeball it and kind of see how much I think it needs, but that's about a quarter of a cup. And then I have three pieces of bacon that I have cooked up right here. So I'm just going to kind of, with my finger, fingers, crumble it up down into the mixture. Now we're just gonna mix this together, make sure it's all combined. I have six muffin, I think it's only gonna make six, but I have them oiled up and we're just gonna use a little, what is, is this a little meatball? Ice cream scoop. <laughs> and we are actually gonna have more than six cause I'm not gonna do more than just one scoop. I think you can if you want to, but I'm just gonna do one scoop. So we need a few more. I need some more of this, that can't be healthy. This is what they are looking like. Once the oven comes to its full 400 degrees, I'm gonna put this in the oven for 20 minutes and I'll show you what they look like when they're done and then we'll taste test them together. This is what they are looking like. It took exactly 16 minutes for my oven to cook these. They're nice and golden brown. They look delish. But how does this taste like a jalapeno popper? Girl, I might need to make a video just on these alone. You get a little bit of spice from the jalapeno. Not bad as far as the spice level. 
this this is delicious y'all need to make this oh that's good these are gonna be absolutely perfect with our jalapeno popper soup i'm so glad that i thought to make it this way oh that's good all right make these and let me know what you think It has been cooking for about six hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the chicken out. And I am just going to put it into another bowl. So we have three pieces. Oh, got it on the side of my crock pot. And I'm gonna use this little thing just to quickly shred it. And then we are going to add our cream cheese which i have already diced up girl i don't know if it helps because look it's just it looks like it's just like a big old blob I, I don't know i don't know if it's because it's the lower fat cream cheese or what but that's honestly my favorite tasting cream cheese so it's not even the fact that it has lower that in calories it's just that's the one I prefer so that's the one I always gravitate towards but this looks pretty shredded it was pretty quick so we're gonna put that chicken back in there stir it up and then we are going to put our cream cheese down in there is again now just a big old blob there are no more chunks it's just a blob at least it's a softened blob, right? Ooh, ooh. Oh, girl, it's gonna be so good. With our jalapeno popper corn muffins, girl. Okay, this makes six servings. I don't know if I said that. The recipe just says cover and allow it to melt. So I'm just gonna kind of stir a little bit more. I feel like it's melting pretty well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the cover on. My timer still had 10 minutes on it anyways, so I'm just gonna let it go. So the recipe calls for half a pound of bacon to be fried up on the stove and then added, set aside three pieces, but add the rest into the soup. I don't wanna do that. I want my bacon crunchy and fresh, so I'm going to make I just get microwave bacon, so I'll put it in the microwave. And then as I'm done bowling, putting the soup in a bowl, I'm gonna top it with the bacon instead of having the bacon. Cause I don't want my bacon getting soggy at all. This looks insanely delicious. Look at how thick and creamy this is. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for this. Okay, so I'm just gonna scoop some of this in my bowl top it with a little bit of cheese and some bacon and then we'll taste test it together so this is what it looks like i'm so excited to give it a try and try it out so i just have a little bit of a side salad i just have some lettuce which is romaine lettuce what else cucumber homemade ranch fat free cheddar cheese because i forgot i have it in there so i was like let me go ahead and use it up and then our jalapeno jalapeno popper cornbread so let's give it a try. I'm so excited. I don't think she's gonna like it. I don't think Kentrell's gonna like it. But you know what, that's okay. Because I like it and I'm definitely gonna be having these for lunches coming up. What do you think? She actually likes it. It's not bad. She said it's not bad. Girl, mm, mm, mm. oh yes, mm. 100% yes, I've already tried this one, try it again, two thumbs up for sure. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Again, don't forget to let me know down below in the comments below. 
Don't forget to let me know below in the comments down below. How do you prefer these videos? Do you want a specific number or do you like a specific time? Don't go past this time or I like this many crock pot videos or crock pot meals in one. And not even just like crock pot, just any, cause you know I'm gonna be doing lots of different meal ideas on this channel. It's not just gonna be crock pot, all of that. If you guys wanna check out my salad video, which I'm very happy about cause it was all delicious. That will be linked down below in the description box. All of the recipes are going to be linked down below in the description box. So that way you can just click it and it'll take you right to the recipe owner and the blog and all of that stuff. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and make sure you leave me a comment down below. I love you guys, have an amazing day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.